Welcome, brothers, to a, uh, a brand new type of video, if you will. You know, getting back on the YouTube train, I'm going to say that, but who knows how long this is going to last. I'm doing what I can, though, and this is kind of a uh, my first foray back into, I guess, this off-season's go at YouTube. So, hopefully you enjoy. If you couldn't tell by the title of the video, this is an elite technical analysis. I think it would be interesting to go and check out kind of uh, some of my favorite throwers, some of the all-time greats in the sport, look at the things that they do well examine their technique and hopefully pass the learning on to you guys. At least I hope that's how this goes. I mean, I'm not here to be like, oh, they should have done this better, should have done that better. Like I said, I'm trying to highlight the things that they do well. I'm hoping that after looking at, I don't know, 25, 50 different throwers, you can kind of see the very foundational stuff that each thrower does well. So today we have a very special thrower to me personally, Primos Cosmos. Yeah, I got to meet him once. It was great. It was like meeting your, you know, your childhood hero. He was great. He was cool. Didn't speak a lot of English. At least I had very limited interaction with him. But it was cool to, I guess, you know, meet a thrower that I really looked up to, and I still do. You know, I think he's a very great thrower. He's obviously well accomplished. He's thrown super far. He's thrown far when it matters. World champion, all that stuff. So let's get into it. Hope this works. I'm really just raw dogging this video too, like low budget. Hopefully, really easy to edit because that's always the biggest drawback when it comes to getting back to YouTube is finding the time to edit all these videos. Um, so yeah, this is 2009 World Champs. I think this is his last throw. He's already won the competition, so he's kind of gonna send it. Like, how could you not? Um, and uh, yeah, so, so Cosmos, like I said, I've always looked up to him. I'm also part Slovenian, so like, for some reason that resonates with me. Um, a beautiful, beautiful throw, long, relaxed, great orbit, rhythm, boom. Already had the competition unlocked, decides to throw farther anyways. What a dream competition. Also, this is in Berlin. I've been to this stadium, and it's probably one of, I think it's probably the only stadium that I know of that I'm like, I wish I could compete in that stadium. I don't know, it's just, it was, it was a sweet place to go and visit and see the whole setup, and I'm like, man, I'd love to compete in, uh, in, uh, what's it called? In Berlin. Yeah, so I'm gonna break this throw down. Let's, uh, let's get to the start where he's in the circle. I guess this is weird, because normally I have, like, a headset on, I'm just, like, looking at the screen, and now I have two things to interact with. So I'm gonna divert my attention here okay so start to the back of the circle this throw let me just pause for a second this throw changed my entire idea of technique it, it greatly opened my mind to I think I was watching this video probably a couple years ago it was over the pandemic and I remember seeing this one thing and I was like oh wow light bulb moment like this needs to happen like basically I was looking at the hammer and when you watch a video it's a 2d plane you're watching it on a 2d screen so you can't really see a lot of things you usually only get one angle so it's hard to tell what exactly is happening because it's not just a 2D movement. There is infinite degrees of directions and vectors and the way things are moving. You have like front to back, side to side, rotational. And it's a mix of all these things all at once. And watching this video really kind of, like I said, set a light bulb off in my brain. And hopefully I can explain it to you guys and see if it helps you guys out. Because to this day, it's still probably one of the more important things in my technique when it comes to kind of I guess feeling connected and, and kind of setting direction all that stuff. So let's take a look and see what this man has going on. So so we're getting started and you know it's Cosmos thrown because he does this very iconic sort of uh, single arm preliminary swing before, before the throw even starts. I don't know why he does it. Feel the tension, get a little uh, pendulum going, who knows what it is. But he's the only person I know that does it. I think maybe Ashraf El Saifi did it for a while, I'm not sure. But so Cosmos, I think he does start with his left foot kind of like at zero in the back of the circle. And then he has this, he's a very large, like I said, a lot of pendulum, a lot of, a lot of kind of steepness, I think, to his throw, to his orbit. But he does a great job of holding posture. He's, I think he's like 6'3-ish, long levered dude, like really solid build, really solid posture. Um, and in this first wind, uh, I like how he's kind of facing the right. Like you can see, he's very grounded, even like looking at his feet. You see that right heel kind of come down, really stable on this right leg, shifting over this right leg, turning back to the right very, very dramatically, probably more than most do. Um, opening up to 270, kind of reaching back behind him incredibly well. As you can see, he's kind of connected with the hammer, um, deep, deep into, this, into the circle. 
and then he does a good job of kind of settling back over this left side arms long out in front of him good kind of like a little step up settle you can see him kind of settle down on this right foot again and then boom he starts to kind of load up I guess for the entry you can see him kind of building the rhythm throughout the winds which is great that's kind of a big thing that I think I see in a lot of good throwers is they build that rhythm through the winds through the entry through the entire throw the, the throw continues to build so coming through this entry you can kind of see and from one thing I've heard is that uh, he kind of thought about having his elbows kind of squeezed together I've tried this myself I think it does help kind of connect a little bit but personally for me it felt a little tight but I've heard that he does that before or he, he thought about that I guess at one point in time who knows it's all hearsay um, and you can kind of see that as you go through this uh, second one you can see the elbows kind of tight together same thing though really facing the right very dramatically reaching back to 180 connecting with the hammer super early left arm nice and long really ball far out to the right long arm and this is one thing that I think depends on the person like obviously he's an elite level hammer thrower um, he has probably a steeper orbit than most and I think as we go through the video we'll explain why perhaps that works for him and why maybe some people don't have a more steep orbit or maybe that's for another video I don't know like I said we're rambling here we're raw dogging this video no script at all yeah um, but either way he's working the ball through the low point balls getting worked through the low point whatever you can see he's very connected he's you can see the tension he's kind of sitting back into the throw and then he's just so long with the upper body and the arms he's like really like stretchy through kind of the shoulders in a way um, and then as he goes through entry this is the one thing this is the number one thing that like I said changed my entire idea of throwing I don't know why I noticed this just all of a sudden but the one thing that really like defined the way that I thought about the hammer was he sits back and not just with like the hips or whatever but it looks like he kind of and I like I said maybe this is a reaction of what the hammer is doing so he's not even thinking about it consciously but this is a thing that I saw where I was like oh I don't do that in my throw and then I tried it and all of a sudden things got way way easier and that is kind of setting the left side direction so you know let's pause for a second we'll stand up but setting that left side direction um, too, too tall but basically as you're going through zero this left shoulder is kind of coming back and pulling back to an extent and that's that's a tricky that's a tricky thing to get to happen because of course you don't want to pull the left side but at the same time if you have proper connection with the hammer which obviously cosmos does it can kind of help set the direction of the entire rotation if you have to if, if you really understand hammer it's it's a rotational event but through a linear pathway so you're trying to set the direction and rotate along that linear path throughout the entire throw and I think setting this left side back this left shoulder back like I said I like to say left side because it's more general it's about the the foot and the knee and the hip and the shoulder it's not just the shoulder um, but this is a thing that I've never seen before like I said I was thinking about the throw in a 2d kind of perspective and you just think like oh the ball is out wide to the right or wide to the left you can really have no idea of depth perception when you're watching from you know a throw from straight on where that's why I enjoy watching both side view and front view videos um, because you can kind of see different things you can see you know in a side view video like is how's the direction of the throw what is his what are his hips and shoulders and what's the ball doing at certain points in time and all that stuff so like I said when I saw this I was like oh wow the throw is way more complicated than I thought it's not just like push the ball and left and right and blah blah whatever like there's 360 degrees of movement going on at all times if that makes sense um, but yeah so that's this is the, this is the thing in the entry you see him kind of set the left side back like I said his elbows are kind of tight squeezed together but then he also kind of stays you can see this stable left side nice left side axis and he never really kind of goes around the left side as all at all you can kind of see his hips kind of stay back over his right leg his body kind of settles back over his right leg towards the end of double support and like I said he's kind of got a weirder path through the circle he um, like I said he's very kind of back on this right side he's back away from there he's countering it well if you will um, and what I really like about this throw specifically is his hips are very forward towards the hammer or not towards the hammer but just hips are tucked under towards you know the high point towards the ball good posture his hips aren't back away well, even though he did sit back as the ball went through here his hips aren't back away from the hammer he's not bending forward at the chest he has very solid tall posture and this is like I said I think why his 
steeper orbit seems to work because his posture was just solid as hell. Um, kind of gets on the side of the foot a little bit. And then he's kind of, you can see, he's a little dramatic here, but uh, this is the thing I talk about in a lot of technical analysis videos where you see the plane of the shoulders and the hips kind of matching. You see, you know, his hips are relatively level, his shoulders are relatively level. If anything, his shoulders are a little bit more tilted down than his hips are, especially as you go into this first catch where it looks like he's like super off balance. And I guess that's kind of the point. The way to accelerate the hammer in single support is to be off balance. Uh, that's how you exert a torque on the hammer. Your body, gravity's pulling on your body, you're hanging onto the ball, so therefore gravity's pulling on the ball as well. Even if the ball is kind of, I guess, rising to an extent. So he's off balance, big tilt in the shoulders, um, but he, you can still see he settles back over his right hip really well towards the end of uh, Double support, I guess as double support goes on, he settles back over that right leg really well. And you can see that right leg, it's, it's working up through the throw. So, so great. Love to see that. But he's just super connected, and that's the thing. He's just super long through the arms. You can even see, um, and this is a thing that like I, I think uh, when it comes to pulling or pushing or whatever you think about the throw, um, it really doesn't matter. It just depends on what your model is. And I guess Cosmos, in a sense, it has his own model, right? And he does a damn good job of doing it where you know maybe if he pushed the ball more he let the ball get more ahead maybe it would help but he found out what worked for him and that's kind of what it's all about at the elite level but as you're going through double support like i said he settled back over that right hip his right leg's working up into it really well he is kind of coming across the body with that left shoulder but you can kind of see the direction it's it's so perfectly tuned where you can see you can't see the ball right now because it's literally disappeared because of the frame rate but um the wire in the ball, his right leg, his left shoulder, it's all kind of working up through and working in the direction of 180. Even though he is rotating all at the same time, like I said, it's that linear path through the throw. So he does a really great job there. <clears throat> and then same thing, his hip is just really working it. You can see his hips just working the shit out of the ball every single turn. He catches, and like I said, he has a more, uh, he just looks way more off balance. Like at, at this point right here, it's like, how are you gonna get yourself out of this position? But he's just so finely tuned, he's so connected to the hammer that he catches ball of the foot really nice. And then same thing, settles back, gets his hips underneath him. And that's kind of what I think, like I said, his posture is really what gets the job done for him. And like he's very dramatic coming across the body, kind of more of a dragging, pulling style throw. But he does it so well. Hips working up into the hammer, almost driving the ball. And like I said, so this is, as the throw goes on, in that very first turn, he, he's kind of set in that left side direction. And so he's more of a left sided thrower, I'd say, if that's even a thing. Uh, I'm making that up right now. But as you can see, same thing, every single turn, that right leg working up through the left shoulder and that left shoulder is kind of pointing back in the direction of 180. It's all kind of together. He's striking the ball at the right moment. His hips are working up into it. He lets the ball kind of stretch towards the sector. He keeps his hips underneath him. He keeps, uh, he stays on the ball of the foot, on that right foot in uh, turns two, three, and four. And he's just super long, countering against it super well. And he's just so patient, even though he is kind of more of a pulling style thrower. Um, especially as we get into turn three, you can start to see those hips really working up into the ball. You're starting to see that direction. Head's kind of getting back against it, countering really well. I especially love how his lower body turns together. You can see his feet and knees and hips and everything. The whole body is turning with the ball. And this is a thing I say to a lot of people and they just, Maybe you can't quite figure it out or it's just hard to feel, but turning with the ball and Cosmos is doing exactly that. Knees, hips, shoulders, everything turning together, hanging on the hammer. You can see him kind of getting a little bit of left side uh, kind of tilt. Like I said, it's it's uh, kind of dramatic, but I like it because he's hanging on it. He's really hanging on that hammer. As the ball is at his high point, he's kind of pulling down on it to an extent. Um, and he does it so masterfully, so masterfully um, to the point where you know, I mean, he's just, he's a technician. It's great. We'd love to see it. Um, <clears throat> kind of, uh, I guess you could say it's kind of similar to Litmanoff Senior, perhaps, to an extent. A little bit more left-sided, but uh, still, this, and this very final catch, his hips are perfectly underneath him. His left side's all lined up. This is great. He's settling in. You can see him just work the hips up and really grind into the ball. Extension, triple extension, getting total extension through the feet, through the hips, through the knees up into the upper body and releases and it's just great it's a thing of beauty so yeah boom and then he just drops that fat you know was it 81 something meter throw 
when he's already got the comp one. It's a thing of beauty. It really is. So, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what you guys are going to take from this. But basically, like I said, this was the throw that kind of changed the way that I thought about analyzing hammer technique. Like, oh, when you are thinking about changing your technique, you have to think about... It's like an infinitely complex system. You need to think about, oh, if I change one thing, if I change where I push the ball, or how I push the ball, or what I'm pushing the ball with, if you change the direction of that, you can change it so many different ways and you can probably conceive at this moment in time, especially if you're newer to throwing. Yeah, so just, just food for thought. Just uh, Sometimes it is as simple as just push the hammer or you know work the right leg or whatever it is. But other times, especially as you get up into the upper echelon and you're trying to eke out those, you know, those centimeters, uh, little things, like I said, kind of setting that left side in the entry, setting that left side direction, getting a little bit of, uh, of, of linear action through that left side as the ball goes through zero, those things are the things that make the difference. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I think maybe I'll script the next one because this was a little, maybe too raw for my liking. I might edit it a little bit, but uh, yeah. What a beautiful looking throw. I absolutely love to see it. He's just so strong in that right leg. That posture is so solid and his patience each and every turn. He's just such a stretchy looking thrower too, which I love. Um, Cosmos, I'd say, is probably one of my main technical models. When you've watched throwing enough, you can kind of see a little bit of uh, what you do in uh, in everybody, I think. So uh, thank you for watching. Um, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about Cosmos's technique. Also, like, let me know what other, what other throwers do you want to see analyzed? Because there's, you know, like I said, there's probably a list of 50 people that I want to, like, go through and, uh, and kind of analyze. So let me know what you guys want to see next, hopefully next week. Friday, Saturday, I'll get a video out. So, and then also, Grip and Rip. All right, go check out my website, gripandrip.co. I got t-shirts and long sleeves and hats and stickers, all that stuff. Got the merch, support the brand, support the sport, support your boy. And also, if you're interested in a technical analysis of your own, if you want me to analyze your throw and tell you what you need to improve on, just like I did here with Primos, then go check out my website, check out the coaching services. I also offer lifting programming, throws programming, all that stuff, coaching consultation. I'd love to sit down and help you guys out. So yes, thank you for watching yet again. Smash that like button for the algorithm, I guess. I don't know, maybe you guys will be excited to watch this. Maybe you enjoyed it. If you found any value at all, just share it with one friend and hit that like button. That's all I ask. I just help me grow, grow my channel, help people out, all right? So thank you for watching. Until next time, Sean Don signing off. Rip and rip, baby.